Well, so I'm hoping I can speak. Um, this is a result of visiting grandchildren over Thanksgiving. Um, <clears throat> so what I want to go over with you today is the Clinvor resources that we're developing at NCBI and um, introduce you to it in several different ways. We've had several planning meetings uh, to discuss what kind of resource that we should build to facilitate open access to information about medically important variation and to have that resource be able to support tools to um, um, uh, integrate into um, uh, testing and um, other methods to interpret variation. Okay, this is going to work well. Um, so another way of looking at ClinVar is its infrastructure as far as the database is concerned. So we are treating this as an archive of information that is submitted about the relationship between genotype and phenotype. We are not doing the interpretation. We are representing what is submitted to us. And because of all of those uh, submitted uh, um, records, we can provide an interface to facilitate comparison of information from different sources, um, provide information about how much a particular uh, report of clinical significance has been reviewed by um, different individuals, by expert panels, or has just come in, come in from one source. And in so doing, this builds on the foundation of the standard databases that we've already discussed, the information that comes from the analysis of sequences. So it brings in information from gene standard um, reference sequences, the variation databases, and, the, and more. And again, as I was trying to indicate previously, it will provide a data service to, um, to be used by all. Another way of looking at ClinVar is indeed a, a record keeping method to keep track of when something was submitted and whether it's been updated so that the archive is, is present and you can go back and look at version uh, information. And so uh, it keeps track of individual submissions and also allows aggregation of information from individual submissions if they are all representing as much as we can compute information about the same combination of phenotype and uh, genotype. And to make this a little bit more explicit, the idea would be that we would uh, different submitters might submit information. Um, excuse me. Um, that information might be uh, slightly different as to the clinical interpretation. And so we would calculate the fact uh, originally that there might be a conflict, but then if an expert group came in and reanalyzed this and came up with a, a current representation of what the clinical significance of a particular variant would be relative to a disorder, that would also be made available. And the history of all of this uh, evolution of understanding would be um, able to be tracked through the history of all of these successions. So let me just briefly go over the data elements that we're going to be capturing in ClinVar. Of course, a key element is the phenotype. And I, that phenotype may be of multiple classes. It may just be the diagnostic name, but it may be the clinical features that go with a particular diagnosis, depending upon what was uh, tested and what uh, was reported um, in a particular submission. And uh, the relationships among those phenotypes can also be provided in, in the record. We're basing this right now on using the information system that uh, the National Library of Medicine creates to integrate information from multiple vocabulary sets, UMLS. And so that um, group, in case you are not familiar with that, keeps track of multiple terminology sets, their definitions, their local identifiers, but it also assigns a unique concept identifier when it is thought that these different groups are all referring to the same concept. Um, as part of the information um, that we're maintaining about the phenotype, if, if we get submissions that do not match in a way that we can calculate as, uh, that is consistent with a concept ID in UMLS, then we will add those vocabularies to our system. And if UMLS does not um, incorporate commonly used uh, ontologies, such as the human phenotype ontology, then we're also bringing that into our system. And um, we're, uh, although I'm representing this as a report of what ClinVar does, ClinVar is integrally 
um, constructed with the genetic testing registry that is also under development and in CBI. And so these data that I'm talking about for phenotype are also uh, going to be part of the public record from the genetic testing registry. Another key data element is obviously information about the variation, so we will accept it however it is supplied to us and then calculate as best as possible uh, how that corresponds to standard reference sequences, whether those be the chromosome coordinates, the RefSeq gene coordinates, the LRG coordinates, um, so that we can allow a translation among all the different current and or historical terminologies that may have been used to describe a particular variant. If there are other database identifiers with that variant, those are also incorporated into the record. But if we get a submission for a variation or a set of variants that is not currently in the public databases, then we transmit those to dbSNP and dbVar so that they can be accessioned and be, can be made part of those databases as well. Obviously, a key aspect of being able to make ClinVar useful resources to keep track of the evidence that underlies a particular um, interpretation of the of um, clinical significance. So we have um, worked with our um, collaborators to identify the key elements that we need to capture with respect to the study, um, what was sampled in the particular study, and the, all the different types of observations that may be critical for later interpretation. And so I've not enumerated all of these here. It's an ongoing process. But the idea is that one of the major functions of ClinVar is not only to be able to accession a particular uh, assertion, but we have all the evidence available as well so that can be freely accessed by others and be a, a resource for recomputation and reevaluation of the significance of a particular variant. So in representing the interpretation, we will um, recognize that there needs to be a data model for the mode of inheritance and we'll um, and <clears throat> Excuse me. So that will be part of record, as well as information about whether there might be some um, concern about whether the variant is actually a, uh, a variant or not. So whether these are regions of the genome in which there might be par paralogs or other things that are contributing to a signal from us, um, an array-based method of assaying variation. And as I alluded to previously, the clinical significance will be reported with with different levels of confidence so that it will be readily apparent how much we trust any particular assertion. These will be dated as well so that if no, nothing has been looked at for a while, that will also be readily apparent. There will be the usual elements that keep track of who submitted things when they submitted it and when it was last touched, and all of these will be part of the database. So ClinVar as a resource has been discussed internally in NCBI for a while. It is based on a lot of, of information that uh, comes from the resources that are in NCBI. So certainly a key aspect of being able to report on variation is to be, have a, a good standard for knowing where the exons are, where the splice junctions are. So that sort of started when we worked on the CCDS collaboration. <coughs> Me. Uh, that evolved into uh, generating standard genomic sequences, which we termed RefSeq gene, which is now part of the LRG collaboration. And so the idea here is to be able to provide um, all of the information that might be necessary to support a standard way of reporting variation against sequence that is, not net, is independent of reassemblies of the genome. Um, another thing that um, I'm putting on the timeline is that we started in 2008 to be able to accept submissions and, um, for information about variation in HGVS expressions. Those um, were tools that we would take either a single submission or a batch submission into dbSNP that correlated that HGVS expression with a publication, a phenotype, and um, an optional um, interpretation of that phenotype relative to the uh, variation. We've recently been ramping up a lot of efforts in working with different testing groups to be able to capture information from those groups. And so we've tried to build in information structures to capture information about rare variation that is thought to have clinical significance. Because of our work with supporting um, as the local house for gene reviews and gene tests, 
We've also been mapping some of the tested variants to the genome in case those were not already uh, so mapped, taking into account some of the historical ways that the variants have been uh, referred to. And, um, and this, again, is a key aspect of our work on building the genetic testing registry so we know which variants are subject to genetic testing explicitly. Obviously, a key uh, motivation for accelerating the work on ClinVar is, uh, is the understanding that there's the ability to capture data about human variation is rapidly increasing. And so having a tool to facilitate interpretation of variation in bulk um, is, is even more important than it was previously. So what's the current status of ClinVar? Well, as you can see, we don't have a tremendous number of records that we have processed. And so we're looking forward to having uh, more groups submit the variations that they've identified. Uh, we do exist as a website in the boxed region. I'm pointing out, in case you actually have ever noticed this website, is we recently um, added more um, documents from the community discussions that we've been having with genetic testing groups um, about some of the discussions of what is necessary and what is desirable for ClinVar. So um, I, I, we, we do have an email set up, so um, we're hoping that as a result of, of these discussions, you, we can engage you in, in uh, contributing to the direction that we should be going and the emphases that we should be um, having. Um, ClinVar is currently in a very silent production mode. As you may know, uh, DBSNP has put together a tool called Variation Viewer, which um, um, brings in information, allows you to filter out um, only those variants that were submitted from local specific databases or f through our computational analyses of the allelic variants in OMIM. And so the interpretations that are there are actually uh, the reports that we have um, from the ClinVar infrastructure. We also have recently launched a tool to facilitate um, automated analysis of variation relative to the genome. And we'll take as input HDVS expressions or locations on the genome. And it's very similar to what I think Paul was talking about. It gives back information if you assert, if, you, if you're representing a variant or just a location on the genome, whether that, in, whether that variant is known to the data, uh, our variation databases, um, what the minor allele frequencies are, whether there's clinical information known about that. And there's a function as well to download, ooh, excuse me, to download um, um, the full report, which also gives you the translation of, of what you submit into HTVS expressions in genomic cDNA and protein coordinate systems. What's coming soon is we hope more interaction among multiple groups so that we can um, provide information about variations that have been called um, from um, different data sources, and that we can also make um, these data available by FTP or by um, uh, APIs. We have been trying to um, mock up what a full report might look like, corresponding to the types of data that, we have, uh, that I enumerated that we would be capturing. So there would be a quick overview section with links to um, more information that might be related to the disorder and or the variants that we're talking about. There would be a, a list of all the different ways that we know a variant uh, might have been expressed historically and or um, in different sequence coordinate systems. So in this example, um, um, referring to the variant in uh, RefSeq gene, LRG, um, OMIM terminology, DBSNP, and um, um, other historical representations. It was very interesting going through this example because I was using the, um, as you probably notice, the, um, the susceptibility, the risk factor for age-related macular degeneration. And I discovered when I did this that the RefSeq gene and the LRG that were created for C, um, <coughs> for complement factor H, is actually the C allele rather than the uh, non-risk allele. So that was interesting. Um, and there's information about more phenotypic data as a, a way to navigate to more detailed information displays for displaying the variant on the genome and in the genomic context. 
um, uh, a full enumeration of all the, res all the observations that may have been generated, including the counts of con cases and controls, or whatever information may have been submitted. I should make a point that this is a mock-up. We do not have this level of detail yet um, in what we've been managing. Um, and because of our integration with genetic testing registry, there may be information that we can also support about um, whether the a test is available and if there is a decision to be rendered about the clinical utility of acting on a particular, this variant if it's been observed. So I just want to close with say that I'm talking about information that comes from many, many groups um, because a lot of work has gone in from all the different groups generating the variation data and, um, and Stop squawking now. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Donna. So we have about eight minutes for questions. We'll just open it up to the room. Yeah, Brad Ozenberger from NHGRI. On, on your evidences slide, there was a bullet that said review by expert panel. Could you clarify the level of active curation that will go on? So I, I, I was trying to represent that we consider as ClinVar as a substrate for panels to pull the data and then review them and then resubmit information that would say the results of their conclusions and we would point to the whatever citations or whatever document came out of that review process. So I'm not saying that the ClinVar staff is reviewing all of the submissions. We are just providing an infrastructure to show all the evidence and support any, um, rep just support the representation of whatever uh, conclusions may come from expert panels. That answer your question. Thank you. Chris, Chris O'Donnell, NHLBI. Um, this is a really important resource, and just as we heard earlier about the differences between um, RS numbers and other, other ways of characterizing SNPs, there's also no agreement on how to characterize phenotypes and um, clinical you know, diseases and, and traits. So I, that's going to be terribly important in being able to use this in, in any meaningful way. And I'm wondering what um, efforts are being made to have some consensus developed about, about what's going to be used as the phenotype um, ontology. Or, um, and I think NCBI would be a great organization to help spearhead that effort. So we've certainly had discussions with Office of Rare Disease Research and other groups at NIH to try to determine what would be an appropriate strategy to consolidate all the information that's coming from all groups at NIH about how we're going to represent phenotype. And we all agree it's an excellent idea, um, but um, there is no one easy answer. And so I think all we can do as is continue to provide the evidence for why it was called that way, and I hope that that's going to work. Uh, we will be able to have a citable object as, as the concept identifier, what we're talking about, and um, m maybe that will, that will help. So um, just thinking about potential solutions to that problem and, and solutions that have had false starts in the past. You had mentioned SET as one of the historical sources for getting some of this data. And for those in the room who were involved in SET, we recall that there were lots of discussions about really trying to standardize the phenotype data that was submitted to a lab when a test was ordered with the idea that that could then go into these types of phenotype databases. Not clear to me to what extent that ever happened, but just thinking generally, it would seem that both the labs doing the tests to the extent that they need to get this data anyway may be a source of phenotype data. And building on what was discussed in the last section, if or when EHRs evolve to the point that they are actually phenotype databases, again, blurring the line between clinical and research, but that seems like an obvious place to go to get phenotype data as well. And if we're thinking about how we build the future, I would think that both the labs and the EHRs are excellent places to look for this information. Yes. Well, there's explicitly listed up here, the reason for using the UMLS um, is because it includes things like Sonoma and CT. <clears throat> and one change that we got, uh, happily I don't need a microphone. So, um, oh, sorry. We, uh, um, we did get a brief. Come right up to 
Um, so it, it was explicitly listed there, and it was might have been hard to hear Donna say it, um, but we're using UMLS on purpose because it does have standard medical vocabularies in it, such as they are, <clears throat> uh, one of which being SNOMED CT, uh, which is a standard for HL7 uh, EMRs. Um, we also got agreement uh, from the SNOMED group that for what they called the genetic subset, uh, we could redistribute um, those names and identifiers without a license fee um, because a lot of the smaller laboratories doing genetic testing may not be able to purchase a, a license. <clears throat> um, and so uh, we are aware of that and we're attempting to sort of open up a, as much as possible the standard vocabularies and make them accessible uh, and then let, let them come from multiple sources. Don, I have one uh, last question. So on your evidence slide, it, it, there was a, a relatively long laundry list of things that we'd like to see provided with the submission. And uh, we heard from Elaine that, that clinical labs are willing and interested in participating, but resources are scarce. I'm just curious about the process for, for the labs collating this information and, uh, and uploading it. How um, you know, is that going to be relatively straightforward for them? Have you worked out some sort of submission form that they're in agreement with? So we have developed two submission forms. One is a spreadsheet form, and one is a, um, for the wonks of us, the XML submission form. Um, and this has been developed more to make sure we have opportunities to capture the kinds of things that people might want to submit. Um, but we have not tested this with groups yet to see how they would fill that out. So our, our sample submissions that we have gotten have been through the interfaces that we originally developed with dbSNP and worked out with in, as part of the LRG collaboration, which was a simple spreadsheet of variant phenotype clinical assertion and publications, and somatic and germline, and a, a very small number of qualifiers. <clears throat> 